Welcome back to the Camp Victory Bible Trailer today. If you were with us, the last one we dealt with was a different part of the history of the Jewish people that we normally don't cover in our release time Bible classes, but today we're back in line with where we normally would be. The children of Israel had come through the Red Sea, they had wandered around in the wilderness for 40 years, and they were just about to go into the Promised Land. But, there was going to be a new leader. You see, the Bible tells us that Moses wasn't going to be allowed to go in because he had disobeyed God at a certain time in the, in the wandering around in the wilderness. He had not done what God told him directly to do and so had not represented God the way God wanted him to as a holy God. And so he wasn't going to be allowed to go in. His servant or his right-hand man, we would say Joshua, was going to become the new leader. And we'll talk about that in just a minute as we learn about faith. We've talked about faith every year when we come out to the Bible trailer. We learn about faith because it's so important. God says without faith it is impossible to please God. So we all need to have faith in God. We need to believe that God will do what he says. How do we know what God says? That's right. We learn what God says by reading his word, the Bible. And again, I, I say this every time. I hope that you are taking time every day to read some of the Bible. In fact, it's a good idea as you get older to take time to read through the Bible every year. So you get to know what God is saying in a very special way. Well, faith means believing that God will do what he says. So as we read God's word, we believe God's going to do what he says. Or for a lot of what we read in the Bible, we believe that God did what he said that he wrote in the Bible for us to read. And then in Proverbs 3, 5, we learn this every year too. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Put all your faith and trust completely in God. And lean not, don't trust your own understanding, but lean not on your own understanding, is how the verse says. So when I lean on this counter, I'm trusting that it's going to hold me up. When I lean on God's word, the Bible, when I believe and trust it, I'm putting my life in God's hands and I'm trusting him. That's what this verse is all about. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. The rest of the verse goes on to tell us, actually the next verse, that in all your ways we're to acknowledge him, we're to believe him. Talk to him, and he will direct your paths. Do you want to know what God wants you to do in life? Well, here it is. He wants us to trust him, to look to him for guidance every day as we're making decisions. And if we're doing that, he will, step by step, lead our paths, guide our steps. Well, Joshua is now the new leader. Moses is there. He puts Joshua in charge. And then the Bible tells us that Moses goes up to the top of the mountain and he dies there. And the Bible says that God buried him. So nobody knew where Moses had been laid to rest. They had to trust God. Joshua is now the leader. Remember, he was one of those 12 spies that had gone into the land 40 years before this. He was one of those 12 men who had come back and seen what lay ahead across the River Jordan. And so maybe Joshua looks across that river again and he remembers what he had seen there. He knew that one of the very first cities they were going to have to fight against in battle was a big city by the name of Jericho. And so Joshua learned some lessons from that first time there. Remember how those 10 of those 12 spies had told the rest of the people, we could never win a battle against any of those people. They're giants compared to us. And so Joshua very wisely 
secretly talks to two trusted men. He knew he could trust these guys. And so he says to them, shh, you very carefully get into the land. You get across the Jordan River and you get into the land and I want you to spy around the city of Jericho. I want you to see what's going on because we're going to need to know what to do when we get there. So you go check it out and be careful about it. And so they probably said, yes, sir, Captain Joshua. And they went out one evening when nobody knew where they were going. They go across the river and they sneak into the city of Jericho. The Bible tells us that Jericho was a very fortified or walled city. The walls were very thick, as you can see here. They even had houses built right into the walls. The walls were that thick. And they get into the city of Jericho, and then maybe they begin to visit around, talking with some people very carefully. And they find a place where they can spend the night. There was a woman by the name of Rahab who let them stay at her place. And so they're in there that night, and somebody reports to the king that these Jewish men had come in there, and they probably tell the king, they must be spying on the land. And so the king sends soldiers to get them. But Rahab knows that they probably will be sending soldiers any minute, and so she had already taken care of the problem by hiding the men. So when the soldiers come, and they knock on the door and say to her, bring out those men that came from the Jewish camp. They're spying on us. She says to them, well, they got out of here already. Before the gates were locked, they took off. If you hurry up, you can catch them before they get back to their camp. Now, she wasn't telling the truth, was she? But she did what she did to protect those soldiers. And you see, she didn't know the Lord yet, did she? That's not really an excuse for lying, because God doesn't want us to lie, but in this case, she was trying to protect somebody. Well, the soldiers leave, and she talked with those men whom she had hidden on her roof, covered them up with some straw, just in case the soldiers searched the place. She talks with them that night, and she says to them, look, I know that you're from the Jewish camp, and I know that your God is going to give you this land. She said, my people are scared to death. We heard what your God did for you when you came out of Egypt, how he opened up the Red Sea so y'all could cross on dry land. Now, wait a minute. That had happened 40 years before this. 40 years had gone by, and yet those people knew that the God of Israel, the Jewish people's God, had power like nothing else. Because God is unique and holy, isn't he? And so she said, I know that your God's going to give you this land. We heard what your God did for you, and my people are scared to death. And then she said, Make me a promise. Since I have protected you from the king, promise me that when you come in to take over our city, you'll protect me and my family, and you won't kill me. Well, the men said to her, We promise. If when we come in here, you haven't told anybody what we came to do tonight, if you keep that promise and you gather your family into your house here on the wall and nobody goes out the door into the street, we promise we'll keep them alive. And then she helped them to escape. You see, her house was right on the city wall. And so she was able to drop a rope out the window outside the wall and they climbed down the rope and got away. And before they left, they said to her, Here's another thing you need to do for us to show that you want us to rescue you. You take this red rope that you let us out the wall with and tie it up in your window. When we see that, we'll protect you, we promise. And so 
she did that exact thing. She tied that rope up inside of her window to let them know she wanted them to rescue her. She was trusting them, wasn't she? She was putting her faith in them and also in their God because she said, your God's going to give you this land. So she believed, didn't she? Well, they went back after a couple of days of hiding so that the soldiers couldn't find them. They went back to Joshua and they reported to him, let's go in. We'll take this land. Those people are scared of us. They're afraid of our God. And so Joshua tells the people, get ready, because in three days we're going to go into the land. He told them to get ready to see what God was going to do. Now, those men were able to cross the Jordan River because they were men. They probably found some logs or something to get across on. But now they have to get two million plus people across there, and some of them are little children and babies. They had to get their sheep and their goats and their cows and, and their wagons full of stuff across there. And the Bible tells us the Jordan River was at flood stage because it was in the spring. And so it was swollen outside of the banks. You've probably seen creeks do that when we get a lot of rain. It's not safe to play in them, is it? Well, God told them, get ready. Here's what I'm going to do. And Joshua believed it, and he told the people, watch what God's going to do. He told them, as soon as the men who carry that special box called the Ark of the Covenant which is where they stored the Ten Commandments and they kept it up in their church to represent God being with them. He told them, as soon as those men step into the Jordan River, God's going to dry it up for you to go across. And so they had to trust God, didn't they? Well, he told them, you're going to follow them across the river. And so the day came. Those men carrying the ark of God walked down, and the Bible says as soon as their feet hit the water, God stopped the Jordan River from flowing. It was like God put his hand right in the water, and the water couldn't pass him. And so the water piles up far upstream, miles and miles, and dries up below there. So now all the people can just walk around below where these men were standing, and cross over to the other side. God told them to pick up 12 big stones out of the middle of that river and stack them up on the shore to remind them what God had done for them there that day. A memorial so that they would always remember how God brought them across. Well, you know what? Those people in Jericho had heard about what God had done down at the Red Sea when the Jewish people came out of Egypt, but now they saw it happening right there in their backyard, didn't they? And the Bible tells us they were really scared. They locked up their city, closed the gates, didn't let anyone in or out. And they were trusting those walls of their city to protect them. Well, now that they were across, Joshua, as the leader of their army, needed to know how are we going to get into these walls, past these walls of this city. And so maybe one night he went out there to, to kind of walk around a little bit and just to look at it. And I think he was praying and asking God to show him what to do when all of a sudden he saw a man standing in front of him with a sword in his hand. And Joshua said... Whose side are you on? Are you fighting for us or against us? But the man said, Neither. I have come as the captain of the Lord's army. And so Joshua bows down in front of him, because this was Jesus, had come to give Joshua his marching orders. And so Jesus says to Joshua, Here's what you do. And the plan that he gives Joshua sounds crazy. It doesn't make any sense in a military way. But he wants Joshua to trust and obey, to have faith that what God says this night is going to work. Here's what he tells him. Joshua, 
you're going to have all the people come up to the city. The men who carry the ark of the Lord are going to walk in the front, and you're going to have seven of your preachers with trumpets blowing. All the people will line up and march around the city one time every day for six days with the priest blowing the trumpets. Nobody else is allowed to say anything. Not a word comes out of your mouth. Then on the seventh day, you'll get up early, and you're going to march around the city, same as you've done the other days, but this time you're going to march around seven times. And on the seventh time, the priests are to blow really loud with the trumpet, and then everybody will shout, and I'll knock the walls down for you to go in. Now they had to trust God, didn't they? They had to trust God and obey Him if they wanted to see God work. And so Joshua tells the people what's going to happen, and they obey. And they get up, they march out there on the first day, staying far enough away from the walls that they can't be hit by an arrow or a stone or anything like that. And so they march around the city. Now can you imagine, inside the city that morning, these people are scared, aren't they? They've heard what the Jewish people's God had done to Egypt. And now they're there. And so they're probably really scared that first day. I'll bet there's nobody on the wall. Maybe a soldier in a corner somewhere really carefully looking out to see what's going on. But everybody's inside with their spears, their swords, whatever weapons they had. They hear the trumpets playing. And then it gets quiet. And nobody attacks. So maybe they peek up over the wall and they see them going back to their camp. Maybe they scratch their head. What are those people doing? Well, the next morning it happens again. They hear the trumpets. They get ready. And the people march all the way around and go back to their camp. What's, what, what are these crazy people doing? The third day, I have a feeling it looked more like this, with lots of people lined up on the wall. Maybe some of them are laughing. Maybe some of them are hollering out there, you can't figure out how to get past our big wall, can you? Ha, ha, ha. But you know what? The Jewish army, they don't say a word. They're obeying God, aren't they? Well, the fourth day, the fifth day, the sixth day, maybe more and more people are lined up on the top, and maybe the soldiers aren't even getting ready anymore inside the city. But then the seventh day comes, and they march around, and then they march around again, and they march around again, and again, and again, six times. And all the city's up there laughing, maybe. And then they go around the seventh time, and then all of a sudden, those men with the trumpets blow really, really loud, and the people shout, and God flattens the walls of Jericho. Those big, strong walls were no match for God, were they? He just knocks them flat. And so the Jewish army is able to just run straight in front of them and destroy the city completely. But wait a minute. Didn't they promise somebody that they would protect her? That's right. Rahab's part of the wall stayed up. She had left that rope in her window, and so God protected her because she trusted him and obeyed. And so Rahab and her family escape. They're the only ones who survived the battle. And so God had protected this woman because she trusted him. She believed in this God she had only heard about. And now she lives among the people from then on. And God blessed her in a special way because of her faith that she actually ends up marrying one of those Jewish men, possibly one of those spies that had sp stayed there, and she's included in what God tells us about the Jewish people from then on. 
You know, God wants us to trust him, to believe that he will do what he says in the Bible. He's made lots of promises to us. I hope that you're reading them and trusting him to keep his promise. Let's pray. God, thank you again that we can come to the Bible trailer to learn about your word and things that happened a long, long time ago in history, real live events, not made up fairy tales. They're real, actual things that happened to show your power. Help us to trust you. In Jesus' name, amen.